Topic nine is molecular structure. There's a single underlying approximation that you make how whatever route you go down in the discussion of molecular structure, which is the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. So you assume that the motion of the nuclei can be frozen. So in the hydrogen atom, the two nuclei can be held at whatever internuclear separation you want and allow the electron to migrate around it. And you do that for all the um, molecules you're going to talk about. They all assume that there is no coupling between the electronic motion and the nuclear motion. And so you can start to talk in terms of solving the Schrodinger equation for, sick, for fixed atomic location, nuclear locations and just solve it for the electrons. Now, the, just about the earliest um, um, uh, account of molecular, theory of molecular structure was valence bond theory, which really has bitten the dust in a variety of ways. It's not of great interest to modern computational chemists that they focus on molecular orbital theory, which I'll come to shortly. But the language of valence bond theory survives. Um, it survives in um, thinking about the electron pair as being the crucial component of a, of a bond. It survives in the terms like um, promotion, hybridization, resonance, and so on which are still part of the general language of, um, of, of, of chemistry. So you can't get away from it, even though it is no longer the, um, the, the, the theory of choice for computation in, in chemistry. The language survives. It's very useful. On the whole, valence bond theory, because it focuses on single bonds, um, is more widely used in organic chemistry than inorganic chemistry. I mean, in organic chemistry, you've got these great big molecules uh, and you really want to focus on the carbonyl group, for example. So a localized description, which is characteristic of valence bond theory, is typically used. Whereas in inorganic chemistry, we've got little molecules or you know, fairly small complexes and so on. You have to think of the electrons being distributed all over the molecule. And so molecular orbital theory is rather more natural. It's a, a way of, of, um, of talking about those systems. And as we'll see, is more amenable to implementation um, in computer algorithms. Venus bond theory then came first and simply says that you know, Think of orbitals, electrons in orbitals, let them overlap, let the electrons pair, and then you've got a bond. Um, y pairing accounts for um, a lowering of energy, which is the characteristic of bond formation, um, is, is related to the Pauli principle. Not the Pauli exclusion principle, but the more general Pauli principle, because only if the electrons pair their spins does do the two overlapping orbitals form a, an overlap, a, a wave function of the appropriate symmetry that satisfies the Pauli principle. Um, then you get into, of course, the classic case of carbon. Why does it form four bonds and two bonds? So you invoke the idea of promotion then you realise that uh, all four bonds in methane should be the same. Incidentally, they're not. And you therefore introduce the concept of hybridisation and so on. And then you get to the point where you realise that there are several possible structures that you can write in a valence bond form. And so you introduce the concept of resonance, which distributes bonding characteristics over the entire molecule and also helps to um, lower, lower its energy. Um, but 
Now, the focus these days is mostly on molecular orbital theory. And just as atomic orbitals were introduced by a one electron system, the hydrogen atom, so it's conventional to introduce molecular orbitals through a one electron system, which is the hydrogen molecule ion, H2+. Um, and out of that, you get the whole panoply of different types of molecular orbitals, wave functions that spread over the entire molecule. And you're introduced to a sigma and pi orbitals, and, to, um, uh, and then you simply apply the building up principle to these in the same way as you do for atoms. But now your wave functions are distributed over the entire molecule. Natural, natural next step, of course, is to say, OK, what about all those homonuclear diatomic molecules? And that really is taken into account by applying the building up principle to um, the orbitals that you have been inspired to introduce uh, through the hydrogen molecule ion. Natural next question is, what about heteronuclear? And now, of course, the the atomic orbitals that you're overlapping to produce molecular orbitals contribute with different weights that uh, an electronegative atom might contribute more of its orbital to a, a, a bonding orbital than a less electronegative atom. And what you've now got to do is to try to identify how the nuclei of different atomic charge influence the distribution of molecules of, di in, of, of electrons in a di heteronuclear diatomic molecule. And of course, the next step from heteronuclear diatomics is up to polyatomics. And um, it's, you can't really um, do much with polyatomics at this level of exposition, except to introduce one of the still widely used and easy to implement uh, modes of calculation of um, the coefficients in of atomic orbitals in a polyatomic molecule, which is the Huckel theory of, um, aromat of um, planar aromatic systems, where you say, more or less, I can't calculate it, therefore it's zero for all the integrals that appear in, in, in the calculation that you should do. But in a way, it, even though it's primitive, and indeed, it was introduced very soon after the introduction of, of quantum mechanics itself back in the 1920s. Um, it really does give you insight into the, the nature of um, conjugated carbon systems, and in particular, aromatic systems and so on. And you can begin to understand the electron distribution which in the end gets replicated by the more complicated system. So it sh certainly shouldn't be thought of as, um, as a waste of time to do. It gives you insight into the way that more complicated calculations are done. And it also gives you insight into the electron distributions of, of um, planar conjugated systems. And then, of course, you get to um, the big stuff in the end of the focus, which is computational chemistry, where um, we allude, there's no more, you can't really do more than that, to the way that computational chemists go about their business, being among the heaviest users of computers in, 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 in the world, in fact, together with meteorologists and cryptologists theoretical chemists use a huge amount of, um, of computational power. And, it, um, um, and you get uh, you know, self-consistent field calculations, which you can't really talk about in this level of text, but um, you can show the results. Because one of the marvelous outcomes of computational chemistry has been the um, 
introduction of graphical procedures for displaying the results of the calculations. So it's far e easier and much more interesting and more revealing, really, to look at a portrayal, a graphical portrayal of electron densities in a molecule than it is to look at a table of numbers, a whole grid of numbers. So um, computational chemistry, as well as being very powerful now, and all of it essentially being built on versions of molecular orbital theory, except one sort of branch which broke off a decade or so ago, which is density functional theory, where you don't focus on the wave function anymore. You focus on the electron density itself, you know, the square of the wave function, and you do all your, fun your calculations on that. So it's a rather different flavor of calculation and is ex widely used for the discussion of, for example, um, D-metal complexes. Um, but all of them give you marvellous displays, which really brings chemistry to life. You can really see what a molecule sort of looks like, and, and it guides you in your, your understanding. So this focus really has brought you from the most primitive to the most sophisticated. It's brought you from the hydrogen molecule ion, uh, well, from the hydrogen molecule in valence bond theory, and the hydrogen molecule ion in molecular orbital theory, and have planted those as seeds in your understanding of more complicated structures. And you are brought through them up to complex systems, including electron distributions in solids as well as individual molecules. So it's, it's a focus which emphasizes growth from a simple idea and the adaptation of very simple ideas to very complex systems.